filled with his voice, re echoed the praise of the Lord. Bless Dear shepherd, I hear and will follow thy call. I know the sweet sound of thy voice. Restore and defend me, for thou art my own, and in thee I will ever rejoice. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. I was just sharing with Pastor. You know, I've been gone for a week. And while I was up in Georgia for that week, I, uh, I got into a discussion with a bunch of guys about politics in, the, in, the, in America. And God gave me this, this revelation that it's just not in America, it's in the world. He says that the earth which I made inhabits my spirit. He says, and the spirits that are loose right now are not my spirits. He says, every spirit that I lose is righteous spirits. He says, but the spirit of unrighteousness which comes from within us is permeating throughout the earth. That is the reason why the earth is in turmoil right now. And if you look, how many of us see fires going, earthquakes going, tsunamis going, monsoon. They just had a big monsoon rain flooding people out. And look at the spirit of man. Man is fighting against man all over the earth. And God told me to tell the people of God, especially in his house, that we have got to get rid of those evil spirits that are in us. He says that we let things happen in us and we see things happening around us and we as people of God do not stop it. He says we have got to stop being accepting of those spirits. We have got to attack those spirits and let them know that they have no place within us. We have got to let them know that there is no place for the evilness that is in man right now. And we need to stop it. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Reverend. Amen. Our scripture text for this day is uh, Psalm 51, 7 through 12. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Yes. Wash me. me with and I will be whiter than snow. Let me, let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Amen. 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 We want God to do a work in us. Change us. Remove all those evil spirits that want to reside, take up residence in us. But we're asking him to just renew us. Bring us back to our first love. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 You see how God gives confirmation? And it's amazing how he will confirm everything. I was just in conference with the pastor, and I told him, I said, I, had, I just have to come and tell you, pastor, what God had said. No, I had not. Uh, you talking about this morning on the prayer line, yeah. Yeah. What he did was what he what he told me was he was having a conversation with uh, Reverend Juanita on the way to the church, 
And he says it was something to do with the spirits that are permeating within the earth. And I had not talked to him. I came in and I says, I got to share something with you, Pastor, that God told me to share with you. And as I start to tell him about God is telling me about the spirits that are in the earth, he says, stop. No. And he told Pam Bradley, he says, go get my wife right now. Because Pam came in and she asked a question about spirits. She says, she says, Pastor, I heard you on the prayer line talk about the Jezebel spirit. He says, this is the third time you've talked about a spirit. And he stopped, he stopped me in the middle of what I was saying. And he says, go get my wife. So the four of us were in there. As you know, there are four Gospels, right? There are four Gospels. And he says, God operates like that. He says, and I'm going to tell you all something. He says, before you say another word, he says, I was just talking to my wife on the way to church. He said, we were having a conversation. He says, and I told her that God says that there are some spirits that are in the earth that we need to get rid of. He says, now, he told Reverend Wendy just now. He says, I haven't talked to Lee. He said, but Lee came in and told him, told me, he says, God told me to tell you, Pastor, to give, get ready for warfare, spiritual warfare that are permeating within the earth. And that's what God told me to tell him. And then Pastor stands up. He's sitting behind the desk. And guess what he's wearing? Army fatigues. <laughs> and I told him, and I told him, I told him just now, I said, you know what? I said, as soon as you stood up and I knew what God was telling me that I had to tell you. And see, and what God told me to tell him was to count on me, to count on all of us to be ready to fight the spirits that are inhabiting, not just Mount Olive. He says, there are spirits that we see on a regular basis, but we won't confront them. Why is it that we're so politically correct when we know that there's something that's going on spiritually that we should address in our homes, on our job? Yes, I know it's kind of tough on your job because this, this America that we live in, they want to separate, they call it church and state, but they want to separate us from God. And they want to deal with us in that kind of a spirit, that evil spirit, amen? Yeah, and we, don't, we just got to be the ones strong enough to not accept it. We have got to be strong enough not to accept it. I mean it. Some people will not stand because they say, oh, I'm afraid I'll lose my job. That's just like on the, the NFL. Everybody watches football. The people, the people, they're asking, why is it that we know unrighteousness happens? And the NFL accepts so many domestic violence, thievery, it's accept all these things. Yet, and still, if somebody stands up for unjust treatment, they ostracize that person. They won't give him a job. They won't do anything. They dread. Why? Because he, and I, and I, and I can tell you as a soldier, it was not an insult for that man or any of them to sit down while they do the national anthem. It's not an insult to me because I served in the military for the right for them to protest injustice. And that's what we do. The general that Donald Trump has appointed, General Kelly, to be his chief of staff, he has said something that really upset a lot of people in the White House. He said, God first, country. He says, and then maybe we'll follow the president if he's right. That's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is a general that I respect. He's a former Marine, but he was also a big four-star general. I respected that man, and I'm going to tell you, when he said, God first, then your country. Yeah. I knew then that there's some be some, some turmoil in the White House because there is some ungodly people right now leading our country. And those spirits are inhabited, inhabiting our White House now. Those spirits are inhabiting our nation right now. And we as citizens of that nation, we have got to stand up and recognize and point out those spirits, amen? And don't be afraid. Don't be accepting. 
I know some people say, oh, it's politically correct. No, it's not politically correct. God is not a political God. He has no respect of person. Amen. So if you have spirits that are inhabiting your home, your children, your husband, your wife, or whatever, you need to call on God to remove those spirits. Amen. And you got to stand strong, spiritually strong, spiritually strong in the name of Jesus. And let me call the warrior on up in here. He all dressed for battle. Let us give our pastor a hand. <laughs> Church, say amen. Church, say amen again. I praise the Lord. And he's so correct. Their spirit's running loose and God is calling those spirits out. And we're going to start dealing with some of those spirits. Uh, I will announce now to let you know something. As a matter of fact, next week I've been saying something to the leadership of the church. It's one of the spirits that God is calling out. And that is the spirit of Jezebel. On next week, not this week, on next week, I will deal with that spirit in Bible study so that we'll learn to identify the spirit, how it operates, what it does, and how to get rid of it. And so, uh, so you can spread the word and tell folk. Uh, before you can deal with, before churches can fully function like they're supposed to, you have to get out spirits. And, 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 and the, the problem with us is this. We don't know we are spiritual. So we flounce our spirituality around in ways that we don't even understand. Because we think we're just natural. But here's what you got to understand. If I walk over here and I touch Sister Crutcher, there's a spiritual transfer takes place. Now, I want you to think about self. If that creates a transfer, what do you think sex does? So you have to think about who you've been transferring spirits with. Somebody say, pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. All of us need some sabbatical. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because sometimes God had to put us in sabbatical to get rid of some of the spirit that we have. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. And so fasting time. Mm. And so we've got to understand and when we get in church with attitudes and dispositions, we're flouncing spirits around. And what happens is, if, if enough of the same people keep operating in that spirit, it becomes a stronghold. Because the demons, they multiply, they increase it, they intensify. And so we have to get, the problem with us is we try to act, operate in church like we just natural. And if we wasn't spiritual, wouldn't be no sense in being in church. Okay, which I want to talk about some tonight that we need to do and to know to deal with those spirits. I want to talk about discernment. Yeah. Because you got to have discernment to deal with spirits. What is discernment? I want to try to get a working definition. Discernment, it is the spiritual ability to be aware and understand those things which are not seen, which are not known, and which are hid. Are hid. Not seen those things which are spiritual that you can't see, but they exist because you don't see a thing, don't mean it ain't real. 
Let me show you a, a one easy one to do. Yeah, you can't see that air, but every time you're gonna go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't see it, but you let it not be there. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it won't take long for somebody. It won't nobody to tell you. Ain't no air in here. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you. <laughs> my, my Lord. And so <clears throat> the things that are not seen, that are spiritual, that are beyond the natural, uh, the things that are not known. Now, and what you mean not known? There's some things that you don't know, but you know. You know. Yeah. There's some things that you don't know, you know, but you don't know, you know. Right. It's in you, but you don't know it's in you. That's why I tell y'all a lot of time we come to Bible study, it's already there. You know, but you just don't know you know. Yes. We naturally already have the word of God in us. Exactly. And so when, you know, Jesus is the word, right? And if Jesus is in us, we are the word as well. There are people in this world that have never, don't, don't even know how to read, but can, they can speak scripture as if they had learned it, read it. So the word of God is naturally in us now. When you develop your spirit, and you develop the spirit by, you know, getting closer to God, prayer, then it's coming, it will come naturally that you will say, hey, I just said this, and, it's a, and then you read it, and it's a proverb. And I say, oh my, it's an experience that happened to David, but you actually experienced it and know it. So the word of God is in you. You just need to develop that. Amen. Okay, and listen at what the word says. Let's go to 1 John, 2 chapter. Okay, some other side reading from verse 18 through. Please raise your hand for the mic. 18 to 22. Dear children, this is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. Okay, hold on a second. You, the Antichrist spirit is already in the world. So you don't have to wait for the Antichrist spirit to come. The Antichrist has not been revealed, but the spirit is already here. So we know we're living in very spiritual times, and we also know that we're living in end times. And so and if we're living in end times, all of this stuff is going to crank up even more so. Go ahead. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. Mm. And these are folk who are supposed to be Christians, but not stand to be. And so, and he said, they don't belong to us because if they had it, they would have stayed. And they would have remained faithful to the faith. But they went to other stuff. They caught up into the wrong spirit. Now, listen at what 20 says. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do not know it, and because no lie comes from the truth. Now, there's an anointing in you that from the Holy One, and you know all things, or you know the truth. The truth is in you. So, so, so you know that because it's in you. And so he's saying, I don't write to you because you don't know the truth, but I write to you, uh, I, and in terms of that, that no lie is the truth. The enemy will try to spread lies, but you know the truth. Now, every time we allowed ourselves to be deceived, it's because we allowed ourselves. The wrong that we've done, we knew we was wrong. Mm -hmm. That's why we were sneaking, hiding, lying, playing games. Because we know what was wrong. We know the truth, but we want to play ignorant, you know, because we like even in our language, and we have to watch our language. 
Oh, I didn't know. Uh, they don't know. Yes, they do know. Yes, I did know. And so we have to change because our language gives us an excuse. And we use language to try to excuse ourselves. But when you have to self, tell yourself, yeah, I knew that was wrong. Even when it was first, <laughs> I knew it was more than just a lunch. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I knew I didn't need to go to the lunch from the start with. Yeah. See, so you don't have to tell yourself. Uh, and and it's just like over the years when I'm trying to, I know who I need to, who I need to avoid. Yeah. And I've trained myself some folk. I don't even go in there. My partner told me one time, he said, man, this woman said she keep trying to get with you. She can't never get you in the right place. She trying to get up with you. I don't even want to know her name. Don't tell me no more. Bye. Because you start putting that stuff in your spirit. Mm -hmm. She want me? Ah, flesh rise up. <laughs> yeah. Then you want to go and play with it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Go, what you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and you start stuff. And every time you do that, you open yourself up to spirits. And them spirits, go on. Go a little further. Yeah, go a little further. Go a little further. And God will help you out. I, one time I was uh, at a track meet, and I was uh, out there, and some of my students were around, and this lady came up. And, uh, and uh, she messed me up so bad. I say, wow, that's a good-looking woman. And one of my students, he said, Mr. Croucher, Reverend Croucher. And I looked at him. I said, thank you, son. Yeah. Let me remind him who he is. Now, y'all don't act like I'm the only one been there. Yeah. 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 And y'all may say, oh, he just got in trouble. I ain't the only one since the Croucher been there, too. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, she been there, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling I'm gonna post some. I tell I'm gonna post some water on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and while y'all talking, y'all been there too. <laughs> and so, yeah. and so, and so, what we have to be, we have to even be honest with ourselves about that. We got to have enough discernment to know where our weakness is. I saw a fellow wreck his family just with that kind of foolishness. And we saw it, they thought having some problem. We realized we went to see him, went to pray for him. We went on his job. And when I went on the job, I sat down at his desk. And when I sat down at his desk, I saw his problem. As soon as I looked up, oh my God. And here's what I did. There was about five of us that went to see him. And I ain't say nothing. I got up from his desk. And I asked the other four brothers to say, I want y'all to go sit in that desk and just tell them if you see the problem. Don't mention it, but just tell them if you see the problem. Everyone sat in that desk? Oh, Lord. Yeah, I see it. Next one. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I see it. And then we put him in the desk. He sat there like he don't see it. Oh, he go there to my. Uh, I don't, know well, what I don't see, see no problem. Uh -huh. Then he go on. Here he go. Unless you talk. Ah. <laughs> Setting right from his office, his office was in the doorway. Across the hallway was another office. Right across the doorway, in that doorway, was this sexy, sexy, sexy woman. And every day, every time he looked up, right in her face, right in her face, right in her face, right in her face. Yeah, we told him, move your desk. Oh, I ain't in the flesh. See, that bother y'all and yeah, all this foolishness and stuff. All right, now it's bothering us. You the one sitting here looking at it. Yeah, I better move my desk. And so he ain't move his desk. All right, within less than a month from there, him and his wife over there to my house to my separating their stuff out. So I acted stupid. And I sat there and went and negotiated with them to separate out all of their property. And after I got through, I pulled them outside. I said, we talked about everything but one thing. Oh, what, what, what? Yeah, 
that woman that sits right across that hall from you. We ain't talked about that. I don't see that ain't in that. And you see, y'all, y'all, you, you, y'all, the flesh, y'all flesh like that. My flesh don't move like that. All right. Here's what I said to him. And the Lord prophetically spoke. If you don't change and turn from what you're doing, in less than 10 days, you're going to be in her bed. Oh, I ain't, I'm in the, I ain't in the flesh. That's what the Lord spoke to him, less than 10 days. That Sunday, um, I invited him to come to my church. He said, I don't know if I need to come by there, Crutcher. You're going to be messing with me. I said, no, I don't shoot at people from the pulpit. I don't do that. And so that week, the Lord changed my message. And when the Lord changed my message, then I called and I told him, you might not want to come. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I told you I promised I wouldn't shoot at you, but my message is going to go straight at you. You might not want to come. Right. Let me tell you something. It didn't take him 10 days. Let me tell you, here was my message. Show you how prophetic God is. My message was, I've fallen and I can't get up. That's what my message. Now, let me show you how prophetic it was. It wasn't 10 days. Within three days, he slipped over to that woman's house one night. Went to bed with her. On the way back to his car, he parked his car beside the road in the ditch. On the way back to his car, he slipped in the ditch and broke his ankle. And couldn't get up. in the ditch. He was in the ditch falling and couldn't get up. Yeah. 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 Do not take the prophetic anointing lightly. When somebody speaks prophetically in your life, listen. Yeah, and I tell y'all, when Mark Crutcher just run in his mouth, listen if you want it, not even on. But when Mark speaks prophetically, listen. Listen. I've seen God do it too many times. It was in three days. He wound up wrecking his whole family. Yeah. Pastor. This morning on the prayer line, when I was given the interpretation of the prophet, you came to mind. Yeah, you came to mind. And when you came to mind, I thought about the anointing that God has put on you to be prophetic. And you have said so many times about the spirit that inhabits Mount Olive and us. And how we've got to pray those spirits out. Mm -hmm. And how we've got to really, really recognize and I didn't even look at this until I picked it up just now and said discernment. There is no discernment of the evil that is within us. We accept it as if it's an ordinary thing. Wow. Yeah. We've learned it. We've, yeah. Learned to embrace and tolerate it and embrace it. Yes. My, my Lord. So discernment yeah, has to do with that which is, un, which is not seen, which is not known, and which is hidden. Mm -hmm. Discernment is the gift of revelation by which God shares with humanity. The reason why God has to send revelations to us is because we got cut off from the flow of the fullness of God. When we sin, that cut us off from the flow. We knew everything we needed to know. Let me just show you somehow how we got bamboozled. All right. The snake tells Eve you eat from that tree you'll be like God but guess what there's nothing in creation more like God than her and Adam hmm. yeah they created in the image made in his likeness there's nothing in creation that's more like God than them including the servant that running in mouth and she gets bamboozled to think something wrong. 
And, 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 and here was in the thing, oh, God didn't give us something that we were supposed to have. When she was supposed to tell him, look here, devil, I'm a serpent. You, you ain't, this ain't even your business. This ain't snake business. You ain't human business. Get right on, yeah. No, he wasn't slipping then. Walk, he had legs. Walk right on up out of him. Walk right on up out of him. He lost his legs in the process. Yeah, now notice this. Everything got messed up but the devil. The snake got cursed. Eve got cursed. Adam got cursed. And the devil went on with his stuff. Do, 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 do. Ooh, and the way the next one. Do, 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 do. And all of the rest of them lost something that they had. Wow. wow. And that's what the devil does. He comes in and get us to go to pervert ourselves and to lose what we got. And now what they found themselves in a situation where they got sin in them. And where they know like God, they ain't spiritually pure like God. Wow. Mm. Okay. And 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 so 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 you got to have the discernment to understand the difference. Eve should have realized that snakes shouldn't be telling human business. Eve should have realized that you can't go down and you got you letting something under you tell you about somebody over you. God then put you in authority over all the creatures. Yeah, you are the authority and you letting what, yeah, that's like the scarecrow letting the crows tell them what to do. Yeah, you can't win. You can't win. Yeah, see, that song ain't accidental. That's what the devil wants you to know. You can't win and you can't get out of the game. That's addiction. I got your hook and on your hung up. Yeah, that's what those crows were singing to that scarecrow. Make him sing it. Now that's what the thing is. And you notice, they would make him sing it. They call it the crow's national anthem. And he go, I got to sing that again? Yeah. They make him sing. And that's what the devil would do. Make you sing his anthem. To bind your life. And you got to have the discernment to know what's going on. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. How does discernment work? Let's go to Philippians 1, 9 through 11. So while you're getting that, I want you to understand. Uh, those who follow the instructions of God will develop a spiritual mindset that enable them to approve the more excellent things and reject all else. That's part of what the discernment is designed so that you can approve the excellent things, the things of God, and to reject the other things. But if you don't have the discernment, you won't know how to make the judgment. Mm. You must test all things and accept only that which is good. The discernment, that's what it does. It's so that you can test all things. Hence, they must judge what is right and what is wrong. This is not an optional exercise for Christian. Hmm. If one seeks to be spiritual, then he or she must practice discernment. Mm. My, my Lord. All right, if someone would read the text. Okay. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best 
and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So, so the text says, and this is what the, the, the man of God is praying, that your love may abide still in the more in knowledge and discernment. And so, and it starts, and then this is what you were talking about earlier, Sister Crutcher, and in terms of the love of God must empower all of this. The love of God must empower your discernment. Remember that. The love of God must empower your discernment. Tell you why. If the love of God don't, don't empower your discernment, you become a devil. Devils are spiritual and they can discern too. The love of God, that means your motives got to be pure. You're not discerning to take advantage of folk. You're not discerning to take folk away from God. You're discerning to lead people to God. Because otherwise you'll use your discernment and, and you got to understand the devil always seek gifted, spiritually gifted people. And he will try to taint you to turn your discernment against the will of God. I just thought about the tree Adam and Eve ate from was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So every time we're dealing with anything, we, it's either good or evil. And just like the other day, the Lord just told me, he said, your thoughts are spiritual revelations. But you got to know what source they originate from. It's either good or evil. So you must evaluate your thoughts. And if it's good, you know it came from God. But if it's evil, you know it came from the devil. And if it's evil, you don't even entertain it. You quickly dismiss it. You get rid of it. Immediately. And it just hit me. That's the tree they ate from. Because before then they only knew good. And now that you've introduced evil into your existence, now you're going to have to make the judgment. Because why? They want to be like God. God knows how to judge between good and evil. And he knows how to avoid evil. But once you bring evil into your existence, you're going to have to learn how to judge it and recognize it and then resist it. And so now you're going to have to fight this evil that you brought into your existence. And so you're going to have to use that spirit of discernment because God said, I didn't give it to you. You went out and got it on your own. And now because of that, you got to deal with it. And guess what? And you're going to have to deal with it in a demise state because you ain't what you used to be. There you go. There you go. Now she just said a word. You went from being a being to a human being. There you go. And so now you're going to have to deal with it in a diminished state. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, and, and so love has to be the empowerment and the motivation of your discernment. So that you approve the things that are excellent and the things that are right. And have the sincerity. Uh, well, without offense until the day of Christ. Uh, and then so he once said that you'll be filled with the fruits of righteousness rather than the fruits of evil to the glory of God. Amen. And so that's how the discernment works. Amen. Now, then it says, and it begins with love. Let's go to 1 John 4. Yeah, 7 through 11. It used to be the old store. We're going to go to the 7 Eleven. Thank God for heaven. Hallelujah. Okay, now, this love is not the kind that ignores wrong and keeps silent. You hear me? Mm. This love is not the kind that ignores wrong and keeps silent. 
If you let your body do evil right in front of your face, you're going along with the evil. Yeah, this is agape, the love of God. Yeah, it looks out for the best interest of those involved. It asks, what is the right way so and so should go? It is unselfish and it is dedicated to God. Some use love as an excuse for ungodly tolerance. See, you, 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 and, and what does that mean is this. You got a relative that you know ain't right, but you put up with them and let them do people wrong out of respect for them. It may be a mama or a grandmother, but what you got to realize is this. You can't allow your respect for them to cause you to respect devils. If mama cussing everybody out and she don't need to, somebody need to say something to mama. Mama is, because right then mama is not the authority because she's out of place. Mom, there's a more excellent way. Let's find another way to say, can we pray with you? You cannot allow, because you be trying to respect that person and they just in these spirits and align them to throw these spirits all over the place. You got to stop that. Because if you don't, then with your cohort and you uh, allow spirits that are unrighteous to have their way over other people's lives. And mom, she's throwing them spirits out there, binding everything under them spirit because she want to be mean and have her way. And you say, well, I got to respect, I can't disrespect mom. No, you got to go at that devil that's dealing with mom. Yeah, and you have to let mom know that what she's speaking is not of God. Exactly. Oh, I just, because then it affects the whole family and then you have to deal with it with your siblings. It goes all the way through life and then sometimes it's too late to do anything about it and you're trying to recover and it's just it's not good someone told me this she was in a uh, kind of an altercation in a, in a vehicle someone was fussing about a, a parking and under her breath she says I rebuke you. The minute that she said that, she stepped out of the car. Her husband was arguing with the other guy. And when she explained to the other guy, because it was a heated argument, right? The spirit, that, that negative spirit, you know. Um, so she's like, she under her breath said that, and then all of a sudden she goes out of the car and she says, we just thought you're going to hit us. And by her saying that, because she said she uh, reprimanded the spirit first, the atmosphere totally changed Shifted. from Shifted. zero to 100. Shifted. Like, whoa. Shifted. So that's the thing. Rebuke the spirit. The, the minute it happens, rebuke it. Put it on your feet. Say it under your breath, but put it on your feet. Whatever, say it. It will change the spirit, the, the environment. We have authority. God has given us the authority. So why don't we just use it? Take thy authority. That's what she did. She took authority. Oh, I'm going to be like a little kindergartner here. I want to go back to the beginning with uh, words like insight that's in there. And knowledge is being aware. Uh, those words, when we're looking at discernment and knowledge and insight does it start with a mindset
Uh, it starts with beyond the mindset. It starts with a thought. It starts with a feeling. It starts with an idea. And it becomes a mindset. And in, in terms of you have a thought and you follow up on the thought. You have an idea, you follow up on the idea. And the thought becomes two thoughts. And the thought becomes three thoughts. And the next thing you know, you're thinking about it regularly. And so, and then you get stopped talking about it, you go to talking about it. And, and then after you go to talking about it, then you go to acting it out. And then it becomes, by that time, it's become a mindset. And, and, and it becomes a pattern that's been established in your brain. And so, and, and so that ideas, got to realize that we have thoughts, ideas, and all those things open to us. But that's what we have to learn to know, as we said earlier, where they come from and cut them off. And we have to stop them at the path and not even play with them. We, and what you want to do is you want to stop it before it comes a mindset. Because by the time it comes a mindset, it's got influence over you. Yeah. And it becomes the way that you operate. Soon as something happens, you operate in that way. And it's become a mindset. So you want to stop it before it becomes a mindset. Yeah. So, so often, you have to get in the habit of paying attention mm -hmm. to what you are thinking, mm -hmm. what you're saying, yeah. and you have to start rebuking. Yes. Your own mind. Yes. 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 That's it. Is that it? That's why he says the renewal of your mind. The battlefield is the mind. There you so go. you have to renew your mind. You got to renew it. Yeah. Because if you don't renew it, the devil going to take advantage of it. Yeah. And you renew it with the presence of God, the word of God, the spirit of God, the things of God. Now, and you start, have to start thinking about some righteous in that place. And oftentimes, and, and if it becomes a mindset, you need to find a word that speaks to your mindset. Now, and let me just say something else you've got to get. You've got to learn to criticize yourself. You won't ever heal if you don't learn to criticize yourself. Because if you can't take criticism, you ain't going to get to heal it. Now, the other thing that you have to do is you got to stop avoiding pain. Because the Bible says in order to repent, you got to become godly sorrow. That means you're going to feel bad about it. The problem with us, we don't like to feel bad about nothing. That's why, we, that's why the bail aspirin and the Tylenol folk make so much money. Because we don't want to feel bad. No time. They knock me out. Women don't even want to have feel bad when they're having babies no more. Go on, hit that spine, tap me, and just let me know when it's over with. Yeah. And I keep telling every woman that do that, unless something physically wrong with you, you need to do that. I'm going to tell you why. Because what you are doing is rebelling against God. God says this is what you would do. And because a doctor got the way to get you around it, don't mean it's right. Yeah, and I see y'all, you ain't got the bad of pain. I hear what you're saying. Uh, I hear y'all, you ain't the one got the bad of pain. Right, because I ain't no woman. <laughs> yeah. But that don't make what I say not be true. Yeah, and so... Uh, let me show you something else I know this I watch stuff I don't just talk in, in, in just now if you watch the average woman that have the epidural she gonna have more pains two or three days afterward and the woman that went through the pain and got up had that baby and gone home and that, that woman that had that spinal tap her back she oh oh for two days to, sometimes, yeah. And some of them don't get right because sometimes, because they, they sticking in your spine. And they're doing some that God said you supposed to experience. Right. Okay, so I guess I'm not natural. Huh? I'm not natural. What? I had C-sections. No. If, if you got to have, that's something different. Yeah. If you got to have C-section, it's because you can't deliver the baby. But never had a pain. Well, but you, yeah, but you, that was, uh, yes, you did. No, it did. Yes, you did. No, it did. Because once, once at C-section, you, you hurt oh, when that you. thing was healing. Yeah. Yes, you did. That see, see, I know what I'm done. Yeah, yeah, you hurt for the longest when you, as a matter of fact, you hurt more 
<laughs> yeah, after the fact. Yeah, after the fact. Yeah, after the fact. Yeah, after the fact, you had more pain. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. See, see, I see. You got to be up on your stuff. Yeah. See, and 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 so, cause when you have a C-section, cause when that healing, you come out, you gonna be hurting for the longer. Six months later, you still hurt. A year later, if you move the wrong way, that thing still hurt because it's healing on the inside. So yeah, you got the pain. Now, C-section, the habit is where some people can't, they, for some reason, can't deliver the baby. And so, so you have to have, that's a different. But I'm talking about them women, healthy, strong women just running in there, hit my spine. Hit my spine. Yeah, tell me when it's over. Because you are rebelling against God. And whenever you're going against what God say, you're headed the wrong way. Headed the wrong way. Yeah. Headed the wrong way. I just want to go back to the Tylenol and the Cedrins and all of that. When you have them C-sections, you'd be glad to get that medication. <laughs> Amen. It's time then. Amen. So, so C-section is going to cost you even more pain. Amen. Praise the Lord. A uh, pastor. Yes. Uh, Philippians four and eight tells us how we should think, mm -hmm. what our thoughts should be. Mm -hmm. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy. Think about such things. Amen. He's telling us that's, how. That's, we'll put our mind on the things of God. Amen. 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 All right. And, and so we was in the other scripture, 1 John uh, 4, 7 through 11. We're going to think good thoughts and the thoughts of God, good things, the things of God, the righteous things. I'm going to all that filter in your mind. All right. Now, so... Uh, uh, we want to know God through love. Somebody read 1 John 4, 7 through 11. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Oh, hold on. You hear that? Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. If you don't operate in love, you don't know God. Mm. My, my Lord. Go ahead. Whoever does not love does not know God. You hear? See that? The boy, there you go. Because God is love. Mm. So how you gonna know him and you ain't got him in you? Mm. Mm. If he is love and you ain't got love, you don't know him. Amen. My, my, my God. Some folk walk around like they don't know nothing about God. Amen. Mm. Can you love anybody? Mm -hmm. mm. Go ahead. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Now, let me tell you what that's saying to you. If you got love, it's got to show. Mm -hmm. You can't have love that don't show. Mm. God showed his love by sinning. Yeah, you can't have love that don't show. Amen. You got to be like Al Wilson say. Y'all remember Al Wilson? Al Wilson say, show and tell. Just to gain yeah, my place. See, y'all know what y'all want to act like. Uh, yeah, when yeah, I want to say, when I want to say, I love you. Now, and, and so what Al is saying is, I can't just say it. When I want to say it, I got to show you and tell you. My, my Lord. That means I got to do something as well as say something. I can't just be all mouth and ain't nothing else. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so, so. Yeah, yeah. What what you say? You can make your mouth say anything. Amen. My my Lord. And hear what God says. He said, "You with your lips, you say you love me, but your heart is far from me." My 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 Lord. The, the songwriter said that said your body is here, but your mind on the other side of town. My my Lord. And sometimes we come to church just like that. Our bodies here in church, but our mind is on last night, <laughs> uh, two nights ago. Yeah, and we setting up, and, and we hallelujah in the wrong thing. The preacher preaching, and we hollering hallelujah about what happened two nights before. 
Yeah, you ain't even in contact. The preacher said, I ain't even got to that yet. Because you, your hallelujah on something. <laughs> You jumping up all out of play. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Spirit moving, but what spirit is in you? <laughs> Speaking of which, I got to tell you something Jonathan dropped on us last night about spirits. And, and, and it said, you know, uh, said, he said, Pastor, perhaps you need to tell the people that this said, uh, well, if you got to drink, just go and drink some wine. He said, now remember, Jesus made wine, but he ain't made no liquor. <laughs> he didn't say nothing about no liquor. He made wine, but he ain't made no liquor. <laughs> so perhaps you're going to get you a bottle of wine. And go on, set on down, and leave that liquor in the store. <laughs> he made wine, but he ain't make no liquor. Boy, I mean that boy was preaching last night. <laughs> that boy was preaching last night. Ooh. And then he says, now you know what the name for liquor is? Spirits. Yeah. Spirits. Yeah. You drinking all them spirits down. Y'all better leave that worm alone. <laughs> See that? See, I ain't even had to call the name of it. <laughs> you know, Pastor, they try to keep the uh, Indians away from the spirits. Huh? The Indians, mm -hmm. they don't like for them to get a hold of the spirits at all. No, because when they do, they go crazy. Yes, they do. It messed them up. That's what America did to the Indians. Right. They gave them liquor and controlled them. Yeah, the ones who wanted to take advantage of them gave them liquor and they used the liquor to take control. Because, yeah, hard liquor will release spirits within you. I saw them in Alaska out on the streets in the cold. They were so tore up they didn't know whether they were going or coming. So there you go. Falling out. That's it. You don't even know it. Yeah. And so, so there's a difference. And, but but yeah, when he went there, he said, God made some wine, but he ain't make no liquor. I said, pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. I'll use that. All right. Amen. So <laughs> it does. And, 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 and this is love. Not that we so much of how we love God, but that he loved us so much that he sent his son. And beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Amen. And so uh, it begins with our love. Okay. Now, the next one is it is regulated through knowledge. Let's go to Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. It is regulated through knowledge. You got to have, you got to know something now. God said, I have you not to be ignorant. We have a reader. Huh? Hebrews 4, verse 12 through 12 and 13. Okay, go ahead. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit joints and marrow it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart wow nothing in all creation is hidden from god's sight my God, my God. everything is uncovered everything. and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account wow 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 the word of god is alive it's alive active and powerful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, sharper. Yeah, it has a sharpness than any two edged sword. It even piercing to the division of the soul and spirit. And it's hard to determine where the soul stops and the spirit starts. Because they are connected in there together. 
It's hard to, it's even hard to define the difference between them. Uh, but it can determine the difference between the soul and the spirit. The word can. And you're talking about discernment. And it can determine between the joints and the marrow of the bone. My, my, my God. It is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, now notice what it said, not of the mind, but of the heart. The thing you got to watch is what's getting in your heart more than what's in your mind. In the mind is where you want to cut it off so you don't want the mess to get in your heart. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And, and, and so, but what you can't let the devil trick you because it came in your mind that it was in your heart. That's what happened to us. Because it comes in our mind, the devil make you want you to think. When that little boy had to remind me, that was a mind thought, but not in the heart. Because as soon as he reminded me who I said, thank you, son. And I went on about my business. And so, so what you got to understand is this, is that it, it is a discerner. So if you want to know where you're standing, find the word that speaks to you. You want to know whether you're right or wrong, you find the word that speaks to your stuff. And what you have to do is let the word be true mm, and everything else a lie. And so it will discern and speak to those intents and thoughts. And it says, ain't nothing hidden from God. And everything is uncovered in his sight. And, 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 and then it said, we've got to give an account to him. So the word of God, we, that's why we need to know the word, understand the word. That's why you got to use the word so that you have an understanding of how to discern. The word will discern a lot of stuff and tell us where we right or wrong. Just go to the word. But what we do is we make a practice of ignoring the word, disobeying the word, not paying attention to the word, rejecting the word. But do you know the Bible says that rebellion is as witchcraft? Because when you rebel against God, it's like you bringing witchcraft on your own self. You're working on you against your own self. Mm, God. You're helping the devil bind you. You're helping the devil corral you. You're helping the devil use you. Yeah, working against your own self. Mm. So, uh, so it regulated by knowledge. And so, and, and, and now, and so if you have the knowledge of God, you can speak to that thing and command it to be able to get up out of your life. But you need to know the word of God and know that it's a living. Amen. So when you speak the word of God, it goes out there. Discernment is not based on personal opinions, but upon the word of God. Upon what basis are we to dis uh, discriminate? How do we judge right from wrong? Such is to be done only upon the knowledge of God's word. Sadly, many today want to practice discernment uh, upon the basis of emotion, personal friendships, uh, completeness, freedom. Now, our president is basing this stuff on friendship. He don't want to be, he don't want them folk mad with him who put him in office. So he don't want to disown them publicly for doing their crazy, crazy, crazy wickedness. So, 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 so what, what we have to do is we have to not let personal friendship, if my mama wrong, she wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And I ain't right if I'm wrong. Yeah, some of us try to be like that fellow on what that movie, uh, uh, on a 50 cent movie, Get Rich or Die, uh, Die Trying, you know, it butted guy in the car talking about, you know, uh, sometime when I'm wrong, you know, I could be right. And because I could be right, then I am right, even if I am wrong. And he come with this foolishness talking back and 50 cent doing, what'd you say again? Yeah. Y'all yeah, remember that scene, the guy, he talking about the guy fidgeting in the back seat. You know, when I could be wrong, but since I could be wrong, but I, I'm right. And since I could be wrong, I could be right. And since I could be right, I must be right. And this, you can fix some stuff up that sound good. And you can run with it. And the devil will let you run with it. 
but it ain't going to make it right. You got to put that stuff against the word of God. And if the word of God don't hold it up, you better get on off it. I had a brother that used to always say, I'm not always right, but I'm never wrong. <laughs> that was his saying. That was his saying. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now, that's the devil. And, and let me just say this to you. Those kind of saying are dangerous. That's a mindset. And it's a dangerous one. Because it'll keep you on the road to hell and thinking you all right. Yeah. Ain't always right, but I mean never wrong. Yeah, yeah. See, that's one of them philosophies. We all come up with some of them. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. My, my Lord. Okay, now last one I want to get in in terms of uh, uh, I want to jump. I want to go to Revelation 21, 1 through 3. The other ones I want you to read on your own, but I want to make sure that we lift this one up. Go to Revelation. Revelation 21. And the reason why I'm going here is because this has to do with the results. Uh, results of God's eternal presence. God is revealing himself and he will unto those who love and obey him. And that's found John 14, 21 and 23. Uh, we do not know what, we, or what to pray for, but the Holy Spirit intercedes for the saints with groans that can't be uttered. That's Romans 8 and 28. God has revealed his gift of grace unto the church in Matthew 16 and 16, which is, the, which is Jesus. Discernment is given so that we can receive revelations of God, the ability to see God and the things of God. Now I want you to read Re Revelations uh, 21, 1 through 3. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now the dwelling of God is with men, and he would live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. All right, thank you so much. Y'all saw how them lights came over when we got the revelation? All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, in the text, John said, I saw. I saw. That means it was revealed to me. My vision opened up. I saw something beyond what I've been seeing. John said, I saw a new earth, new heaven, and a new earth. I saw them new. And so what God's saying is my, my revelation, my discernment was strong enough that the revelation come to me beyond what I'd ever seen before. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Said for the first heaven and the first earth has passed away. Uh, some got to die until you if you're going to become a new creature. Also, there was no more sea. Oh God, the sea gone away. No more sea. And then John, John, then John saw the holy city of Jerusalem. I saw it. I saw it coming down out of heaven. I, I saw it from God. I saw it prepared as a bride adored beautifully for her husband. And notice what it said. The bride ain't just for anybody. It's for her husband. See, we, we, we want to put our hands on stuff that don't belong to us. We want to touch what don't hold to be ours. We want to touch what we ain't paid for. We want to touch what we ain't authorized to touch. Just because it's pretty, we want to play with it. 
just because it's good, we think we want to act like it's ours, but it don't belong to us. All we want to give away some stuff to somebody who it don't belong to. Uh, it, how many folk know that God has prepared us for a special place? Uh, and then John, now notice what he's saying. He said, first I saw, but then I heard. Uh, then I've got to have the discernment to hear too. Uh, I saw it, but I heard it also. I heard a loud voice, not just any voice, a loud voice from heaven. Not the devil, but I heard a voice that was louder than the devil's voice. Uh, I heard a voice from heaven. And I heard it say, behold, the tabernacle of God is with me in God has come to be with us. He ain't in a lofty place. He's with us. He done brought us up to the lofty place. He's come down and made this a lofty place. God is with me and God has come back with us. And he said he will dwell with them and, and, and they will be his people. We are the people of God and God himself will be our God. We'll be back with him together. John, John said I saw something that I hadn't seen and I heard some heavenly voices. At some point, you ought to stop seeing the devil and see God. At some point, you ought to stop hearing the foolishness and hear the righteousness of God. At some point, you got to stop hearing from hell and hear from heaven. At some point, you got to see beyond your condition and see where God is taking you. At some point, uh, you got to see the glory of God moving in your life. The restoration of God coming forth. At some point, uh, you got to see the power of our God moving in your life. At some point, you got to see beyond your condition, your circumstances, your situation. And see the blessedness of God. At some point, you got to hear God say, it is well with your soul. It is well. At some point. <laughs> then John says, and God shall wipe away every tear from your eye. There shall be no more death. <laughs> no sorrow no crying and there shall be no more pain you ain't gonna need no tylenol yeah you ain't gonna need no bail aspirin huh? you ain't gonna need no multiple splints uh, extra splints and whatever but but god says i'm gonna take away all your pain god said i'm your pain reliever god said i'm your relief huh? god says i'm the one you need huh? For the former things are passed away. Your sins are gone. Your curse is gone. Your death is gone. Your stuff is gone. And God said what remains. The eternal life uh, that I got for you. The place I got for you. At some point, you got to have enough discernment to see from beyond where you are and see where God is taking you. You have to see yourself not as the bonded, driven down, depressed, demonically influenced oh, creature that the devil has got you to be. And you got to see yourself as the child of God uh, who's standing around your God uh, at the feet of Jesus. Uh, at some point you got to stop seeing yourself as a legion standing in the cemetery running around acting stupid and crazy. Uh, and you got to see yourself sitting at the feet of Jesus in your right mind, in your right spirit, uh, in your right place. Uh, at some point uh, you got to see yourself not in the stink raking in the pig pen but as a child of the most high God and see yourself back home with God doing what you could suppose to be doing at some point uh, you have to stop seeing yourself as the flooding woman at the well and see yourself as the servant uh, evangelist of God sending a word to bring soul unto your God I 
standing all over the house. Ah, God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, let the spirit of discernment from the love of God through the word of God be in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits, in our souls, and even in our bodies. And allow that discernment to lead us to make the excellent judgment and walk therein in the name of Jesus. We declare it so in Jesus name. We declare it so in Jesus name. We declare it so in Jesus name. Come on give God a hand of praise as we say amen. Offering will be taken up as you go out the door. Give your offering as you go out the door. Amen. Don't run out the door with your offering.